Hey y'all, welcome to the Sweet Chariot Travel Channel. I'm Shanitha and I'm a solo traveler. This channel is all about me documenting my journey moving forward in my life, as well as me sharing my experiences to inspire other people who are also interested in solo traveling. So that is what this channel is about. At the forefront, it's about me documenting my journey. In my previous vlog, I shared my experience visiting Jakarta, Indonesia, and the highlight of that day was me visiting the Istiklal Mosque because I had never been to a mosque before. I am from the South in the United States. I'm from the Deep South. I was raised as a Christian in a Baptist church, so I'm a part of like the Bible Belt states in the south and visiting a mosque was like a huge culture shock for me and i'm so happy that i had the experience to visit the Easter club mosque because they provide free guided tours and so that's what this video is going to be about like me sharing my experience visiting the Easter club mosque and me sharing some of the things that i learned about islamic teachings and principles that i didn't know before because i had never gone out my way to like learn about islamic culture it's just kind of like stereotypes so that's what this video is going to be about let's get into it cow skin one big cow <laughs> all right let's go over here and see how i get into the mosque So like I said, the Easter Cloud Mosque provides free guided tours. So once you enter the mosque, you have to take off your shoes and you will leave your shoes in a room while you're on the tour. So I highly recommend taking some socks with you or you could just walk around barefooted. They will also give you a robe and women have to cover up their hair with a headscarf or Muslim women normally cover up their hair with the hijab. I've always wondered why Muslim women had to cover like wear the hijab so they have to cover up their head, their hair, they have to cover up their ears and their neck. And I've always like wondered why I thought it was something that was oppressive. I thought the men were like forcing the women to wear headscarves and cover up their bodies. Um, the common reason is to show modesty, but I was speaking to a Muslim woman and she was telling me like the spiritual aspects of it, which is when you wear the hijab is really protection from negative energy and like harmful intent from other people because your hair is an extension of your nervous system that resonated more with me i was like okay i can understand that because growing up as a black american you're told like your hair is your crown you don't allow people to like play in your hair or touch your hair or like you know kind of like treat you like a pet i was like okay i understand that because you never know someone can be very envious and that is something that um it's just, it's life, like you have people who are envious and so you wanna make sure you protect yourself. So that is something I can understand. Also, women have the choice to wear their hijab or not to wear their hijab. So women who do choose to wear it, it's a way of showing their obedience to Islamic beliefs and to their culture. Like they're showing that they're proud of their culture and I think that that is very beautiful. I'm just happy to know that it's not anything oppressive, okay? <laughs> Once we made our way to the second floor, we were able to take in the beautiful architecture of the mosque. It was designed by an Indonesian architect who was actually Christian and despite his religious beliefs, he still made sure to design it with the intent of honoring Islamic teachings which is shown in the measurements and the structure of the building. I also noticed that there are no statues or pictures of humans or animals used in the mosque for Muslims to pray to. There's a lot of symbolism and geometric patterns in Islamic culture, which is so powerful to the subconscious mind because symbolism and images is what connects us to the spiritual world, and that is what shapes how we perceive the physical world. And Islamic art, they have multi-dimensional aspects of 
what is God, like the concept of God. And that is so 5D and I absolutely love that. Being raised as a Christian in the States, as a black American, it's not taught, I wasn't taught to see beyond the physical. Like I was taught it's either good or evil, um, God or the devil, heaven and hell. Polarity in sometimes situations, especially if you want to transform and like break certain situations. Oh, God, God. I didn't know what that was. It was a butterfly. That's crazy. <laughs> Y'all, I think this is the last time I record something out in nature. <laughs> Y'all, the butterfly scared me, but it's crazy because I'm talking about transformation and then a butterfly just comes out. A big one, too. That was a big butterfly. All right. Anyway. I like with Islamic art that they don't put a face to the concept of God or the concept of this Christ-like enlightenment type of energy because it's not a physical thing, it's more spiritual. As I've gotten older and you know I've experienced life, I've had to understand like the spiritual meaning behind a lot of situations, which allowed me to transform how I perceive situations and be able to move forward. Growing up as well, like the image of Jesus Christ, for me created such a disconnect. That was like my first disconnect with Christianity was the image of Jesus Christ. And now that I'm older and I realize like, I pretty much take away the spiritual aspects of the Bible. I realize, okay, it's not like, this image of Jesus Christ that you need to aspire to is more of a spiritual type of enlightenment type of energy that you go through things, you transform, and then, hey, like you can then reach this stage of enlightenment in a sense. That is something that I had to learn on my own. That's not something that I was taught. I like that with Islamic art, there is no physical like face to it. It's more just, it's geometric patterns, it's flowers, it's color schemes, is um, a way of viewing life. And I love that it's so multidimensional. I love Islamic art, more of an appreciation for Islamic art because my own personal beliefs still come from my Christian background. There are five floors in the mosque, which represents the five pillars of Islam, which are declaration of faith, prayer five times a day, giving to those in need, fasting during the holy month of Ramadan, and pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia if it is within a person's means. And we call this burden because the sunlight look, look, look. So that's why we call this burden. And we use this big we use this burden many years ago, a long time ago, before there was any loud speaker, even in language. We use this like a marker call to prayer, to calling the people to remind the time of prayer. And we get this actually by stick, not by hand. This is the symbol, by my hand. Thank you. leather uh, I wonder what part that is mm -mm. that is interesting that's beautiful how they've integrated like the Islam culture as well as like the Muslim as well as the um, Indonesian culture that's beautiful and then they have some smaller ones so this was used to call people to pray I was surprised to find out that Muslims are required to pray five times a day, which is so healthy for the mind to like have the habit or routine of disconnecting from the world to connect 
to the divine and ground yourself like that is so great for your mental health and productivity so i love that they have that habit of making sure that they tap into the divine throughout the day with all these distractions in the world that is an amazing habit that you actually see now in schools where they're pushing kids to take time to like meditate and quiet their mind throughout the day so i like that i really admire that about islamic culture so mosques are primarily places of prayer and reflection for Muslims. A cleansing ritual is performed before the prayer. During the prayer, the men are standing side by side in rows. And as you can see, there are no chairs or wooden benches, just open space and complete quietness. The courtyard was also very quiet as well as very spacious. The location of the mosque was strategically chosen by President Sukarno to promote religious harmony in Jakarta. So you had the Catholic Cathedral, the Protestant Emmanuel Church, and the Islamic Istiqla Mosque, all within walking distance from one another near the Merica Square. That is beautiful. Wow. flower like just fell why not all right y'all if you are visiting jakarta indonesia i highly recommend visiting the istiqlal mosque it's a great way to learn more about islamic teachings their practices their culture through the free guided tours that the mosque provides so i'll leave some more information in the description box for those who are interested thank you guys for watching this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did don't forget to hit that like button share the video and subscribe to the channel if you are interested in solo traveling or if you would like to follow my solo traveling journey Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, bye.